welcome to a yoga video with movement style. My name's Caroline and today we're going to work a seated sequence which essentially concentrates on opening the hamstrings, although we'll also be a little bit mobilising through the spine, shoulder girdle and opening the outer thighs. Let's think about getting started. In seated we are actually just a little bit less flexible than when we're lying on the back or even when we're standing. And we should, though, still try to really think about keeping our spine nice and aligned. And what I'd suggest to help with that often is maybe a folded blanket that you can sit up on to help lift the back of the hips. Or if you find that some of these positions where the leg will be, you know, quite a bit more extended and the back a lot more likely to buckle in that case, then you might prefer to sit on something a little bit thicker. So I have these yoga bricks or yoga blocks would be a little bit thinner and that just gives you that little bit of elevation that often helps you to find the space in your body to keep your spine more aligned. To begin with, let's just open up a little bit through the lower back and through the outer thighs and we can let the legs come in front of us. We can sit on something to again already let the back of the hips lift up and then breathing in we can allow the knees to lift and breathing out we can just release the legs out to the side. So just gently beginning to warm up through the hip joints, through the thighs, releasing a little bit into the inner thighs, just warming up the legs. So breathing in and breathing out, so not too quickly mainly in time with the breath. And then from here, because we're just going to concentrate more on opening up through the back of the hips and the outer thighs, we can send the legs a little bit away from us and then hinging forward at the hip, just lengthening into this position. So probably we begin to feel some opening up through the outer thighs and the back of the hips. You might think about really widening pelvis away from the sacrum Letting the shoulders release away from the ears, shoulder blades gliding down the back, sitting bones releasing into the mat behind us. Nice deep breaths, might be able to really fill the back of the chest with the breath here. And breathing out, relaxing the back of the spine, let the shoulder blades slip down the back, and the sitting bones anchor into the mat beneath you. So last couple of breaths here. And then once again, as you're ready, nice deep lift in the abdominal muscles, we're going to lift up and away from that position. So let's think about taking the left leg and just tucking it back. And we're going to either let the right leg come in front of the left leg, or we're going to bring it right in like that. And this is where you might very well find that it's a good idea to sit on something, either your bricks or a great big cushion to help you lift your lower back or a folded blanket. So again, just spending a moment to let, especially your right sitting bone sink down, let your spine grow up nice and tall. And then from here, let's breathe in, float the arms up. And as you're ready, on the exhalation, let's bring the right hand down so the inside of the hand is to the nose and then the left arm is out to the side. So breathing in, we're going to stretch into the left arm and on the exhalation, just pass it under the right arm so the backs of the hands come towards each other. You can slip the left hand forwards towards the face and then bring the fingers onto the palm. So if it's comfortable and not forcing this part, then you just create that right angle beneath the shoulder joint and on the inside of your elbow, let your spine be really tall and lengthened. Now sometimes people can't do that extra fold and they just turn the palms towards each other and that's also fine, so breathing here. And then once again, as you're ready, let's just breathe in, release the arms, stretch up, and we're going to breathe out and reach for our right foot. So, so here, this is where we were beginning to, before, think about how we were going to keep our back lifted. So we have perhaps something beneath us so that we can keep the lower back lifted. We also need lots of deep abdominal strength, just above the pubic bone, wide to the crests of the hip bones, and if you think about 
rather than just pushing your foot into a space somewhere above you, that you really connect through the thigh into the knee and towards your heel there. And that will be really the best. It's fine as tall as possible now. It doesn't matter if the leg isn't absolutely extended. Just checking as well that the vertebrae in the neck are lengthening out of the vertebrae in the ribcage directly. So here we are stretching through. Now from here, if you feel ready, I'm going to think about holding on to the right foot with the left hand and keeping the waist nice and tall, spiraling, looking back and behind you and opening that arm out behind you. So this picture or this position, <laughs> version of Krinchasana. Now it doesn't need to be again that the leg is fully extended. You can hold underneath the back of the knee with your arm. You can twist through the spine, keep it tall and reaching back. You should still feel quite a nice diagonal opening through the body. So then again from there, you always just release the arm downwards and forwards and taking up through the leg again, letting the back be nice and tall. And now in theory, moving the leg off towards the side. Again, it's the same thing, little by little, releasing space in the hip joint. So in a sense, it looks as though the foot is leading, but actually I'm structuring lots of strength into my lower abdomen, holding my pelvis really anchored and thinking about how I can find space in the hip joint as the leg moves off towards the side. So again, we could modify this, just moving the leg out to the side, you know, just with the knee bent, just go out to the side like that. And then as you're ready, again, letting the leg come back towards the center. We're going to take this leg and bring it down and just bring the left leg up. And then from here, again, just going to spiral away towards the right side. So back nice and tall, spiraling around. And think about bringing the back of the left shoulder in towards the left knee, tucking the arm behind, opening the chest on the other side, just slicing your hand in behind you and collarbones nice and open. Now, if you can't get the bind, doesn't matter. Just let your other arm be behind you, opening like that, elbow points back. And just hold on to this one as best you can. So breathing. And then gently, as you're ready, releasing the twist. Keep your abdominal muscles working. We're going to just lengthen our body forwards along the line of the right leg. So breathing in. Good. Breathing. And once again, lifting back up. So we undo the bind, slide our left leg away. Lift up through the back, keep the lower back and the lumbar back lifted. Shoulder blades compress against the back of the ribcage. Leading with the breastbone, let it travel in the direction of your chin. And then keep lengthening upwards through the neck. And breathe there. And once again, gently relaxing from that. So we're going to work through on the other side. So the left side. So I might just shift over slightly. And this time we tuck the right leg under and then we think about bringing the left leg either in line at the front of the knee or just tucking it right back. And as I do this, um, the weight tends to release from my left hip. And the problem with that is that my spine is now no longer aligned. So ideally, as I'm going to be moving here, it's better not to have one side of the spine a bit compressed, but to really think about the vertebrae and the intervertebral just as, as released and as lengthened as possible. We're not putting pressure onto the spine times when we really don't need to. So here also back nice and tall and lower abdominal muscles strong, navel pulling to the spine. And this is where we thought about with the inhalation, the arms flowing up 
On the exhalation, this time the left hand comes down inside of the hand towards the face. And on the exhalation, passing your right arm under. Then, if we can, we slip the right hand forwards towards the face and bring the fingers of the right hand onto the palm of the left hand. And then once again, if, if it feels feasible or viable, we're just creating those right angles beneath the shoulder joints, the insides of the elbows. But as I said on the first side, backs of the hands together, you can always just turn the palms towards each other like that. Yeah? So spine as long and as tall as we can. And the upper body is in the half eagle, Ardha Garudasana. And the lower body essentially is in Ardha Matsandrasana, half sages pose. Good. And then once again, as we're ready, we breathe in to release, let the spine stretch up, and then let's breathe out to take hold of our left leg. So as we discussed on the first side, we can keep the pelvis nice and level both sides, back nice and tall, and we can just hug the leg towards the squad underneath, or we can extend through the leg. So again, this, this action is very much moving. You know, it doesn't start at the foot, it starts, of course, where the leg begins in the hip joint. You can reach through and holding the leg. And again, although I'm holding my leg, actually I'm using lots of strength in my leg to keep it lifted as well. So breathing there, collarbones open, shoulder blades releasing down the back. And then on the first side, we thought about just holding around the outside of the leg, keeping the base of the spine lifted. So lots of broad and wide, deep abdominal strength within the pelvis, navel pulling to the spine, let the waist twist through and then the spine and the ribs, having the sense that the vertebrae of the neck are lengthening out of the vertebrae in the ribcage, and then you can reach, it's the left arm behind you this time. So it's a little version of Queen Chess and the Queen. Or of course, you can still be holding underneath your knee, the left one, and breathe. So there we are. So now then, once again, as you're ready, the arm can release downwards and forwards and uh, just coming back towards this leg and the leg may be extended or maybe not extended and now the right arm's going to open to the side so this is where again the sense of the leg supporting itself is very helpful for opening space in the hip joint my arm isn't really carrying my leg so around it comes opening space from the hip through the inner thigh but equally, as I said before, you can open something like that. So there we are. And breathe in. <laughs> so then, as you're ready from there, let's let that leg travel back and towards us. And we're going to bring it down towards the floor, sliding it away, hip to heel. And then we just pick up our right leg this time. And this is where, again, I would always say use your waist strength to spiral and twist. And you can just bring your, this time, right shoulder towards your right knee. So you need to lean forward a little. And then you rotate the arm and come behind. And then with this arm as well, release into it. R rotate at the shoulder, you know, rather than just in the forearm. Rotate at the shoulder and then pass back. But as I said on the first side, if it doesn't go back, it doesn't matter. Just rotate a little bit. So there we are in the bind. Breathing. And then once again, you know, here actually, I really actively open my waist out of my hips. And that, that, that tends to give me more space and it feels more of a release. And then as we're ready, holding on to our core strength, let's just gently unspiral. Let's just think about the spine lengthening along this leg. Shoulders releasing away from the ears and breathing there. So spine a little bit rounded in this position as well. I think actually we held on to the bind, sorry, on the first side. <laughs> holding on to a bind. And then and then releasing the bind and breathing in to come back up and away from that. We're going to let that leg slide right away from us. Good. So legs just releasing, knees releasing. 
and on the first side we did dandasana, little back bend, to help us release the back after all that essentially lengthening and forward bending. And so again, you can come into dandasana again, or you can come up into katapada pitam. So that's with the knees a little bit more bent, and so it's the four-legged temple. And again, the position starts with the lower back really lifted. Your tremendous lift from the base of the spine, the muscles directly in front of the tailbone, lower abdomen really deep and wide lift. So it's your Nalabandha, essentially Udhyana Bandha, navel pulls to the spine. So you start lower back is tall, let the weight go into the hands, let the shoulder blades push up against the back of your rib cage, direct the tailbone through to the center between the knees, let your head stay lifted, breastbone and spine keep moving towards each other. Breathing here, breathing here. And then once again, as you're ready, just bringing the back back down again and relaxing forwards over the legs. So the legs can, of course, extend. Don't have to, but can do. So from here, let's just bring ourselves around. Let the hips move back and towards the heels. And we can a little bit test out our hamstring lengthening by coming into Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. So, as you're ready, you send the hips back and towards the heels, reach back from the fingertips to the sitting bones, breathing in to come forward. So again, that profound lift in the lower abdomen, navel pulls to the spine, collarbones open, shoulder blades press against the back of the ribcage, toes tuck under, stretch right back until your sitting bones come above your heels or even beyond. Press your whole hand into the floor, lift through the muscles in the outsides of your arms, extend through the muscles in the ribcage, extend through the muscles in your waist, keep that profound lift in the lower abdomen and out to the crest of the hip bones, navel pulls to the spine and then eventually just allowing your heels to sink downwards but your um, kneecaps and the fronts of the thighs to keep lifting upwards. Breastbone and spine move together and keep tapering the rib cage in towards the spine. So just check how the strength is in your shoulders. Let them be nice and broad and wide. We're going to really lengthen up and back through our left waist and sitting bone and if it feels right releasing into your right leg. Let it really stretch up, hold the midsection strong, Aim not to sink in the small of the back or the base of the ribcage. Keep stretching your leg from your diaphragm over the front of your spine into the inside hip joint, inside knee heel. Breathing out to lower that leg. Keep the lower abdomen really lifted and strong. Reaching back from the fingertips on your right side, through the side of the waist, into the right sitting bone. Powerful lift in the abdomen. Squeeze the ribs in towards your spine. Lengthen the leg back from the diaphragm over the front of your spine, through the inside leg, into your heel. So breathing here once again, really working to keep your spine lengthened. Stretching into the leg, let it open out of the hip, right sitting bone keeps reaching back so you keep the pelvis aligned. Breathing out to let that leg come back down as well. Ears and arms are wide, and then once again as you're ready, on an exhalation, let's bring the knees to the mat, stretch the hips back to the heels, softening into the future full child to relax for a few moments. You can always bring your, your blanket or your support in between the breastbone and the thighs if there's weight going through the neck. Spending a few moments here to absorb the effects of the yoga practice. Opening the upper back away from your spine, broadening the ribs away from the spine, opening out across the back of the waist, broadening out across the back of the hips, letting the sitting bones sink to your heels, feeling all the little spinal processes in the back of the spine softening into the tailbone. Lovely deep breaths into the back of the chest. And as you breathe out, just simply accepting the support of the earth beneath you feeling the weight of the body absorbed into it. Just 
being aware of any stillness or any clarity that seems to rise above the back of the forehead. Just for a moment, floating and being in any sense of union or yoga that might arise. Following the breath through a last round of the breath. And then as you're ready, nice deep lift in the lower abdomen. Let's breathe in, roll up through the spine, vertebra by vertebra, rebuilding, collarbones opening, shoulders releasing away from the ears into the weight of the arms. Om Shanti Namaste. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this short hamstring opening video. Do write comments and let me know how you enjoy the video, if you enjoy the video. And do think about subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. It just lets you know when I've uploaded new videos. Thank you for watching and hope to see you again soon on Movement Style.